Thanks for that. Um, all right, then I'll kick it off uh, for this uh, for this meeting. Um, so last time we uh, went over the existing opportunities, the existing research and ideas that have gone out from the research done by ORID on uh, post-deployment monitoring. And the idea for this meeting is to kind of expand upon that, uh, on those ideas. Um, it kind of, you know, envelops the, uh, like multi-tracking is what it's called. Um, rechecking if, if we're, you know, if we're going to the right direction, expanding upon our ideas, see what alternate ideas are out there. And then we have a better um, scenario to prioritize and, and focus our direction towards. So in terms of how I see this meeting going is that instead of going through all of that past material again, um, I included uh, as a little bit of homework to briefly check out the recording of last week's meeting as those things were already discussed there. So this meeting can be dedicated towards us ideating and solutionizing and brainstorming on, you know, what things are potentially possible. And um, with that, there's this little introduction and I think it's kind of interesting. Let me share my screen uh, briefly here that I laid it out in terms of like this, this little, this little chart here on the double diamond. It's like a, like a common um, diagram to kind of help us to, you know, align on as to where we are. And this first um, big block has actually already been done by Orit. Like she has done, you know, like she's gone out there. She was, she said like, all right, we're going to, or in post-deployment monitoring and do a problem validation and we're going to converge on those insights um, or those, those research notes and create insights and then even already gone a little bit into this second triangle by doing ideation. So the part of where we want to be with this meeting is we have an ideation phase and we have an evaluation phase. So we're going to focus on the first half of the second uh, diamond basically, where we're going to diverge with our ideas, bring in everybody's thoughts and ideas into this discussion and uh, diverge in the ideation. And then we have an evaluation where we converge slightly again by um, making sure that those ideas we have come up with actually align with the researched insights and opportunities that ORD has discovered. Because we can think of all ideas in the world but you know, some of them we will be certain on while others we will be uncertain on. And I mean, the idea here is for us to, um, to make uh, trackable improvements, right? So with that, you will notice that as we start to evaluate those ideas, there might be additional uh, ideas that come up. And as you can see, that's also part of this uh, kind of diverging um, part of the triangle as well. Let me see, quick highlight of discussion of each of the current existing idea of an opportunity. I would like to invite Orit for that and uh, as well to for us all to move towards the whiteboard. So here's a whiteboard meeting and I think that is going to be um, the agenda going forward. This is more of like a script going forward now. The mural here is um, the place where we um, discuss further as it allows us to kind of put our thoughts and ideas on the map and kind of move them around and that helps us to kind of make things visual where we need it to be and um, basically it's a google docs just put your notes in a little document you can move around instead of like one huge doc which were constrict constricted to the outline and formatting of a google document so it's the same thing we can just move things around and uh, I would like to invite or uh, briefly to talk about each one of those insights and not the idea so much um, and basically keep it super short. Like this should be fitting within five minutes to go through all of them, uh, if that is possible. Uh, sure, I'm having some technical difficulties signing into Mural, so give me a minute. No problem. It would help be helpful if you shared your screen when going over them so that you can show where 
in the uh, mural, we're talking about which insight. So this kind of creates that, you know, mind map for us all to talk about and see which insights are located where in the in the mural. Okay. So this is what we're going over, right? Just so that <laughs> make sure that I'm in the right place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So in no particular order, I will briefly go over over them. So first one is users uh, want to get notification throughout the rollback process. So uh, we're talking about post deployment monitoring, and one of the issues there says that we need to support rollback. And basically what this insight says is that users want to know everything going on with the process. They want to know when the rollback started. They want to know the progress during the rollback. They want to know that it's completed. Has it completed successful? Is there, are there any errors and so forth and so on? Any questions? Cool. No, I, and I would suggest for this, um, for this part to just briefly give a, a description instead of now opening up the discussion into each and every one of them. I would suggest that we go over that afterwards while we start ideating uh, on those those insights. At least that's how I was thinking about it. So just read the title? Um, I mean, the title only says so much. So like, I would say read the title and give a brief like ex additional context as to how you were thinking about it because there's there might be some bias involved, there might be some things that are not clear from the title, et cetera. Okay, so um, this one is more around logging, maybe notifications via email and Slack. Um, I didn't give it too much thought. Um, the next one is users want to see threshold notifications on the pipeline itself. So the question is where, where do we want to see the alerts? Do we want to see the alerts on the environment page? Do we want to see them on the pipeline view? Do we want to see them on the alerts page itself, et cetera, et cetera? Um, so I am not going to be biased. I'm not going to say um, anything. Uh, but some of our users wanted to see it on the pipeline. OK? They wanted to see alerts there. Um, users require both auto and manual rollback methods. So. Um, Putting it really simply, not everyone has automatic CI CD. So automatic rollback doesn't always make sense. And for some people who have automatic pipelines, um, they just don't trust us enough to do an automatic rollback. They want to make that decision alone. And some are really cool about having everything automatic. So we need to support um, all of them. Um, and so um, this goes into different, different um, conversations about how we're going to support both of them, where we're going to support both of them, how you're going to configure it, and so on and so forth. Going back to what Dimitri put here, why? Um, by the way, Dimitri, I think you're the only mural was here. So you're the only one that's going to actually be posting <laughs> questions. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just my, uh, my feeling. Uh, why do, do users want to know what's going on in the on the pipeline? Because that's a view that they just normally use when they deploy something, and they want to see everything going on in the pipeline. Um, moving to you know, users prefer auto rollback to manual uh, for specific thresh thresholds. So for those users who do want to use automatic rollback. They don't want to do it always. Like there can be numerous alerts on the pipeline, but not every alert is created equal. So they want to be able to configure slash manage, which is the specific threshold that's really interesting in order to trigger an automatic rollback. For example, let's say I have CPU usage over 90%. That's really bad. It means something really bad is going to happen to the system. And yeah, I just want to roll back. I don't want to get a notification. I don't want to delay anything. I don't want to do it manually. I just want an automatic rollback in that specific scenario. Now, this is very customer oriented. Not every customer thinks that every threshold is the same. So we need to make sure that there's, the users have a way to manage that. Uh, next is users prefer stop rollout if threshold is crossed. Um, so some of the users just prefer 
stop rollout, and I will say in two words, it's stop deployment. So if we're, for example, using Canary or incremental rollout and you start rolling out pods, you just stop the rollout, don't do any rollback, just stop it, okay? Um, and okay, so they, they wanna know it in that, at that point and they wanna make the conscious decision whether to make the rollback or not. They don't want us to do it, just wants to stop rollout. Uh, users prefer defining metrics through UI. Um, so since these are metrics that define actions on the deployment, whether we're gonna stop deployment or do a rollback, they wanna see it visual. They don't really wanna do this with scripts and stuff like that. They want an easy place in the UI to select, to know what they're doing, to be able to view it later on, change it, whatever you want. Um, health check is very important for Kubernetes metrics. So when we started with post-deployment, the MVC um, is around metrics that already exist in GitLab, so Prometheus built-in metrics. Um, off the top of my head, there's error rate, throughput, and latency. Um, but for our Kubernetes us users, health checks of pods are, are just as important and they wanna know that their deployment is healthy. So that's something that we need to think about and add. Uh, users want to roll back to the latest stable version. So Spinnaker um, allows you to configure what your rollback, what version you're going to roll back to um, it doesn't have to be the latest. It can be go two back, three back, whatever. You can, you can decide which version. Um, and for us, for all the users that I had interviewed, they always go to the latest stable version and not something that you configure, just the latest one that was green. So as an MVC or even, even forward from that, I think we're gonna stick to that. Go to the latest successful one and without having the users be able to configure that. We'll see with demand if they ask for it. Uh, next, users want to roll back in case of application failures. So this one is kind of out of scope for the MVC, but the idea is everything that we talked about until now has to do with infrastructure errors. So health check on pods, uh, error rate, latency, whatever. But even at least the same important importance level or even more so is application or logical tests. So some of the people are deployed everything, everything looks fine in terms of their uh, infrastructure, their VMs, whatever, but then they needed to do a rollback because users just simply couldn't log into the system. So, which you can find with any metrics, it's just testing. So what we wanna do is kind of uh, connect this together with the testing group and even with the release manager group and let you define sanity tests that you do post deployment. And they can also give you indications if everything's working properly. Um, so interesting. Um, and then we have, we can There's one stop. more to the right. Oh, sorry. Notification on rollback, defer for different environments. Okay. so. Um, keeping it simple, let's say we have three environments, um, dev staging and, and production. Uh, basically, no one cares about what goes on in the dev environment, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but for staging and for production, people want to know. But it's not necessarily the same people that need to be notified. So production, it's usually like CEO, like C-level that want to know that there's some harm in their business. Um, and for for staging, it's still in the dev's hands. So we need to make sure that you can configure different audiences for different environments per the notifications. Perfect. Uh, thanks for that. The other two, it, like the other two um, uh, opportunities here, are coming out of technical research. And uh, like I've documented based on the uh, discussions that we have gone through the last time. So now we know a little bit about those opportunities. I would like to invite us to um, now get interactive into the second part. And um, because of that, because I don't want us to focus too much on the existing ideas out there, um, I would like us to, let me, let me share my screen and then I'll briefly explain what we're gonna do next. 
um, or could you stop sharing and then I'll briefly share and I'll show what the ideas next are. Um, so we are here in this view and this is now a bit bigger. The idea from here on out, and I'll say here, we're going to brainstorm some ideas first by writing down our thoughts ourselves and applying them on the board as sticky notes. This assures ideas are written down as easy and quick to read notes and are not so much influenced by each other's ideas because this is a diverging ideation action. So the idea here is to pick a little piece of the, of the, of the place here and create your own sticky notes to so say that you're going for green or you're going for pink, doesn't really matter. And you create three ideas or you think of three ideas you can write down on a sticky note. So something like uh, we could add a button to this page. I don't know, something like that. And it has to make some connection to some extent to any of those green notes. And then after we're gonna take about five minutes for this, each on their own. So each, everyone needs to be on the board and create their sticky notes by themselves in a specific corner in this empty space. And then we're gonna briefly discuss it together. Probably we'll come up with some of the same ideas but probably also going to come up with some ideas that we haven't thought about before. So is everyone ready? Is anybody not clear what they need to do? Because if so, I'll give some explanation. I would appreciate an example because I'm not exactly sure that I understood. Yeah, I mean, like, I think, or you have done some existing work already. Um, when you had created the inside issues, you have created additional feature implementation issues as well. That is, I mean, it would have been ideal if this would have done, been done before that, because then we have all chipped in and we wouldn't be um, you know, pre-biased by any existing ideas and would be free to roam around. However, we're still gonna try. And I think um, there might also be upsides towards having those ideas floating around there as, as well. However, I would invite everybody to not look at those ideas right now and just jot down like the first three ideas that come into your mind that have something to do with the opportunities as documented and as like briefly explained by or it as a, a repetition after last meeting. So think of some ideas as to how you would see post-deployment monitoring uh, be thought out as a result of the research opportunities. And don't don't feel feel, um, feel free to also go a little bit outside the box. If it is not directly tied towards any of those research insights, we can potentially have a little discussion that brings and aligns those two together and form a new idea that is closer to what's, what we need. Um, all right. I'll give time until, for me, it's 17.20. So time until 17.25. It's 20 on the hour, 25, we're gonna be done. Everybody take a corner and then we're gonna try this out. Good luck. And no talking. <laughs> That's not a problem for this team. I noticed for someone. <laughs> Yeah, and if possible, move your ideas a little bit away from the like the user insights because we're all looking at the same place. 
This way we're gonna see each other's ideas, which might not be ideal. There's a big empty open space to the right side of the whiteboard. Room enough for everyone. All right, one more minute to go. All right, 25 on the hour. How has everybody done? Is everybody feeling good? <laughs> no, it takes my brain to a long time to like, I'm like scribbling notes on a piece of paper too, like just trying to formulate things. So I did one and I feel really no bad worries. about it. Anything is good. Uh, I think this is kind of like, this is one of those, those opportunities, like those, um, the phases in this kind of like ideation whiteboarding practice that you have to time box because it's like on our own right and i think the most valuable conversations we're gonna have is is right now we're gonna give a short uh, like presentation each of us uh, towards the others and explain their ideas if it's one it's one if it's none it's none if it's three or five or six it, like it doesn't really matter and then we're gonna kind of um bring them together so I'll, uh, I'll create a little bit of a quick boxer in the middle where uh, we're going to ideate. I'm going to block it so it doesn't move around. Uh, lock. Um, so let, let me start off to, get, to set an example here a little bit. Um, so I'll briefly share my screen. 
or rather I invite everyone to click on my avatar. And if you click on my avatar in Yearly, you'll be able to see exactly what I see. You'll see now there's three people following me. So thanks for that. And I have here three issues. And one of them is show health of environment inside of the merge quest. And the way that I was thinking about this is um, based on one of these, let me see. Uh, the health check is very important to Kubernetes uh, metrics. And I was thinking as we have on the environments dashboard uh, or the, yeah, the environments list page, it changes into the environments dashboard as soon as the Kubernetes cluster is attached to it and we show additional information. I was wondering if that health information would not better be suited uh, to some extent if we uh, if the user is um, merging a merge class. So the, the merge of the merge class happened and then we have the pipeline and then we have an additional event that kind of you know showcases the you know the de deployment. And that deployment is then made visible visual inside of that merge quest, which uh, the release manager or the maintainer of the project has been uh, set to merge. Um, I don't know if that is as useful as I think it is, but at least it's one of them. Let me quickly uh, explain the others one as well, and we're going to have um, I'm going to switch to the other ones. Um, the other one is display rollout inside of the merge quest. I already touched upon a little bit about this one. Um, I think it might be valuable to showcase that we're doing a rollout inside of the merge quest. Um, be that, you know, from the pipeline point of view or beyond the pipeline point of view, like how is our rollback going as we speak um, with, you know, from, from the merge point of view towards it has been fully rolled out on the, like on, on our servers. And the last one is as some of the, um, opportunities here. Let me see. Uh, some users uh, prefer auto rollback and the other one prefers manual rollback for specific thresholds. Um, there's, of course, the idea to be able to figure that out on um, in, in research it might be still an unknown for us, like which ones we need for which, but perhaps it might like it might be that we want them to be configurable. Um, so with that in mind, uh, uh, that we can give the users an option for them to be configurable, uh, within their project, say like, Hey, for these, we want auto rollback and for the others, we don't. I'll leave them as three separate ideas. This one a little bit closer, by the way, because they're kind of close merge quests, I would say, um, I'm going to give a different title. This is more like thresholds. And I would like to invite who's going to present next. What about you, Etienne? Yeah. All right. Um, so I am the, the visiting spider. Should I drag my... Um, uh my sticky notes onto that big square or yes that would be how oh, should i proceed yeah all right so <clears throat> that is the first one uh which i wrote leverage web sockets to for async reporting on world work process so i think one of the yeah uh critical point here uh, during the whole process is reporting right this is super important this world work process is like you know important and i would say even like stressful for the user so I think uh, a focus should be uh, made on reporting. And I think uh, WebSockets could be leveraged uh, to do so. So WebSockets, uh, for, for those who don't know what, uh, you know, what they're for, um, there are, it's just whatever enables like async, uh, asynchronous display of, of information, right? So chats use, uh, uh, use WebSockets. And uh, in our application, so let's say, for example, when you're on the merge request page, and you just look at the pipeline, uh, the pipeline disks, right? You're gonna see them like being updated uh, without refreshing the page, right? So that's a, behind the scenes. WebSockets are, are are working to just update without uh, us having to refresh the page. 
uh, they're working to update those, uh, those disks. And so that's why you see that unfolding of data. I think the, uh, this WebSocket should be used for an enhanced type of reporting. And uh, just like we have that unfolding of information on the, you know, on the fly with uh, the pipeline, uh, pipeline running, maybe we should have like reporting on how the rollback pro the rollback process is is going now this is just an idea because i read a very high level idea because i don't know the level of detail the granularity of uh you know the the rollback process that we can uh reach and and then uh that we should show um as part of like some sort of like logging great great idea so that's one um, idea sorry could i add Ask uh, one, one question between. I seem to have some lagging problems with my connection, which seems focus to on be reporting. Um, could you tie it to one of the opportunities oh, potentially, or is that as a separate thing? I might my connection is so bad. So. Sorry, I, uh, I I disconnected for a bit for a bit. Can you please repeat? Sure, no problem. I was wondering if you um, were you inspired by one of the insights, like the green issue, uh, the green tickets. Uh, yes, and also when Orid was uh, going uh, over the insights, the green tickets, uh, there was this like you know focus on just reporting, and so that's why that's what made me uh, made me think of WebSockets, just like the importance of reporting. But as far as like green cards goes, I think one of the first ones was related to that. So that's that. Uh, second one, second one. I just uh, it's in it, it's in that square. So add manual slash auto switch button settings. I think one of the green cards refers to like the user wanting to have manual rollbacks or auto rollbacks. So we should, we usually have like switches in uh, the project settings. Uh, but my uh, so that like. The, uh, the default uh, you know, way to this type of situation. The problem, personally, I find that settings are, be are becoming like very busy, completed with like lots of switches and there is like not much UX. Uh, I mean, there should be some sort of like UI uh, redesign and some UX work that needs to be done. This is like off topic, as I said in, in, my, uh, in my notes settings if we're going down that road uh, and add to like the whole pile of settings into the project settings general pipeline I think that's the section that has like the most switches uh, so maybe that's something to uh, to to think of but like as part of another, another issue and maybe that's uh, that, that's uh, that's already an ongoing conversation which is happening uh, among um, UX folks so Dimitri you may have yeah you may have some insight about that already no worries. Um, yeah. I mean, like from a settings point of view, I think it's always that we always need to consider, like, do we want to hide and bury it in settings or can we make an informed decision for the users? Can we potentially, you know, surface it in a more contextual area? Um, or preferably, can we skip it, skip a setting out at all? Um, but, you know, like, in some way, the idea, as I think related to the one that I uh, described, um, it is in a way a settings view as well, right? Like when, when does the settings view become kind of like a dashboard for configuration? It's always like a little bit of a gray area. Before we go forward into this, I would like to give the word to Chase to present his idea and then on to Orit. Okay, so I have the one lone um, orange square there. I'm also the... Uh, visiting rabbit in the um, list of um, users. Um, so when I was thinking through this, I was trying to, I was reminded of a couple of things, like one, um, sort of like the monitoring experience that I've had in the past in say apps like Datadog, where you can visualize and see all the pods rolling in and rolling out um, and being able to look at, kind of almost watch for patterns if anything else. Um, and the other was using much in the way of like, how are we going to connect up certain metrics uh, through monitoring 
um, in systems like CloudWatch. Like that's like where my brain was headed. Not that CloudWatch is the best interface, but like thinking of how we actually set a specific threshold and how you can then take that threshold and tie it to something else like rollback. Um, if you just had like an alarm by itself, it might be easier to be able to trigger um, the rollback itself if you have a existing way to send out a message to uh, for the alarm itself. If I understand correctly, you want an existing paradigm to kind of connect yeah. alarms with if you're like, if you're already going to be sending yeah exactly if you're going to be sending like an alarm to say you've got by email right like uh something went over a threshold you send out an, an alarm through email or slack or some other mechanism reusing the same kind of trigger mechanism to then also point to a uh, rollback procedure or you know or uh, or the deployment procedure right stall here um if there's a way that we could uh, not like make that thing extensible and not have to reinvent it every time for every specific case. Thanks for that. Um, let me see, where would we, this is more like triggering, I would say. So I'm gonna leave that as a separate thing here. Make this one small because it was an additional. Um, on to you, or if you have documented some additional ideas. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I tried to not repeat myself. So, one of them is log rollback process and logs. So, just, you know, after your deployment, you open the logs, you can see, you know, what's going on if the rollback was initiated. Um, Second one is notifications for rollback started and ended via email and Slack. And that's pretty similar to, to what Chase said um, and also ITN. So like the main events of a rollback, they, they should initiate some kind of notification, whether it's uh, using WebSockets or something else, that's fine. Um, add setting for manual or automatic rollback. And I think Dimitri, that's something that you had mentioned as well. Uh, uh you're going a little too fast though, right? <laughs> Can you uh, drag your ideas? Because you were saying like, hey, this, this kind of belongs to that. I would love for you to kind of, you know, yeah. like drag them into like which of the, the themes we have, because that will make it easier to follow up. But it sounds, okay. sounds um, great. So a lot of them I'm going to put into re uh, reporting. Um, add setting for manual or automatic rollback. I don't know. Do we have a, can we make a theme for settings? Um, yeah, in a way that is kind of like threshold management, right? Like it was kind of similar to, to Etienne's idea. I don't know. This is basically just configuration of what you want from the feature. Uh, but however you want, I, I don't care. Um, then we have display lists of users roles to be notified. So, um, that's either it goes to the configuration part or to the reporting part is who is going to end up getting notifications or errors or, um, whatever. And then okay. I think it's a reporting because reporting, we will need to know, uh, which user yeah. can we really see that. Yeah. Agreed. Um, here I have something that I just thought about now, which is gather statistics of number of deployments stopped or roll back, which is interesting in terms of a CI CD dashboard. Um, I don't know if it fits into any of these themes because it's kind of out of scope. I'm going to put it here. Mm -hmm. um, tie application tests to release orchestration, initiate rollback, stop deployment from there. Um, maybe here. Triggering, uh, so again, the idea is through the release orchestration, you can configure a sanity test that will run post deployment and then they will do something if they fail. Um, and then I have users set rollback stop deployment based on a set selection of metrics. Um, so like check or uncheck specific thresholds. 
Interesting. The last one is what the one you started out with the first, like where would you, where would you put that if you had to give it a place? More in reporting. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, with that, I think we can congratulate ourselves already with this kind of <laughs> like, this feels so new, very uncomfortable, but we get there in the end. And I think it's kind of interesting to, if, if you like the, the ones that I highlighted here, I don't know if this shows up for everyone else, but threshold management um, has ideas from almost all of us in there, um, which is interesting, right? Like, I think that that kind of places some attention towards, I think there's an, like a bigger problem space there for us to explore. There's more ideas that we initially think of in that way. It's an easier problem space for us to explore. So. I don't, I don't think we have time to go into each one of them, but I want to quickly uh, have a five minute discussion on threshold management and see if we can align on one specific idea that we want to move forward with and can be added towards your existing ideas or it. What do you think? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, and and uh, once we decide on one, the question would be, is this an MVC? That would be my next question. Because I uh, think that we can add all of this to the roadmap. I mean, they're all good ideas. And I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, that that is a good idea to add them all. Um, on the other hand, like, I would like to see for this specific instance, like, perhaps we get to an idea which is more um, infused, like, it's like infused with all of our ideas into kind of like one, which kind of like. I don't know, like seems like the best idea out of all of them or is the one that kind of combines elements for multiple ideas into one and that kind of makes it most likely a good idea to 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 get there how that is going to be formed into like a mvc um like scope and issue that is a separate discussion i would say i would say for that let's open up an issue and have a discussion there uh, that's perfectly done async. Uh, but I think that the idea, like what kind of problem are we solving here exactly is, is the most important thing for us to do. So if I look at this, um, I see, you know, we want users to set a rollback slash stop for deployment based on a selection of metrics. Uh, so we want to check and check uh, some kind of things uh, there. It kind of it kind of relate or relies on this or relates to that that we have some kind of like, if, if, if I get it correctly, um, we want the users to be able to configure when it's going to be able to either roll back or stop deployment. I was making it either auto rollback or manual rollback. Is there is there a difference there uh, or as far as this you see it? Because this is one of your ideas, right? Absolutely. So, and there's another little star that I want to put uh, to say after. So there's a difference between uh, auto and manual in the sense that a manual um, action, all we do is just, um, you know, surface the alerts and let the user make the final call whether they should do it. Um, so I don't know, you can think about it, making flashing lights saying you have a problem with your pipeline, do something. Um, of course, no, that's not the idea, but, <laughs> but just to think about it in that sense. Um, just to you know, get their awareness, and at the end of the day, they're the pe they're the ones that have to press the button. Um, and this has a lot of importance, not only because they said it; it also has to do with permissions, who's allowed to press the button, and also for compliance and auditing. So this has a lot of um, you know things that we need to think about. And when you give automatic rollback, you're basically you know tying. Just to, I'm gonna jump on what. Go ahead, Etienne. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. My, uh, my colleague, uh, yeah, I was just going to say something, but my uh, connection dropped uh, at the same time. So that was not great. Uh, yeah, just to jump on uh, what Arit said, that, uh, that ability to give the control to manually roll back, this is something that can be leveraged today. Uh, I'm just thinking about it now in pip pipeline configuration. In the GitLab-CI file, uh, there, is, there are some attributes uh, that are when uh manual i mean there is like manual manual true for there is something that exists already that sets a job in this case it would be the 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 deployment rollback 
you can yeah, set so the job as being a manual job. For protected environments, the deployment job needs a manual approval, and you have like a thing on the pipeline itself that someone actually has to press. Is that what you're talking about? Mm. Uh, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think we're talking about the same thing. That said, I'm talking really from a configuration point of view, like YAML point of view. But really, we are talking about the same thing. You're talking about like the UI equivalent of that. Yeah. Um, well, it's from so derived from the YAML. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, more, I'm more familiar with the YAML. Yeah. My point was just there may be some overlap uh, between CI configuration and settings, right? And so we need to uh, we need to find like where where is the best place to 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 define all of this, which is like in the threshold management section, uh, right? So there, we need to consider also the CI pipeline and the tools that it provides. Yes, absolutely. So so that's the manual part, and automatic rollback is ba basically putting automation on it, uh, and it kind of gives gives you as a whoever's in charge of the deployment peace of mind that you know if something goes really wrong something it's going to be taken care of and you don't have to be really mindful about going and pressing a button and getting all the alerts on time you know so we're all for automation if you can So it would be preferable to have auto rollback rather than manual rollback, you said? Depends who you're asking. Some of the users wanted manual and some of them wanted automatic. The, again, the, the reason why people don't want automatic is for two reasons. One, they may not have an automatic pipeline, so automatic rollback doesn't give them anything. They just don't have CI, CD in place. Or number two is they don't trust it enough. If they don't have CSE in, in a place, how can they deploy just like with Auto DevOps? Yeah. I well, guess that's um, the they, they just do deployment old school, um, or they do only have the CI part automated, but the deployment is not automated. Right? Yeah. Lots of companies have CI but have not reached CD yet. Um, a lot of people are trying to figure out how to how to break down their monoliths into microservices and they're like way, like they're not there yet. So mm -hmm. coming back to this, um, I want, want us to see if we can stay on, on, uh, on topic here. Um, there was an additional star I placed for you there. All right. <laughs> Look at this. There's a nice star here because you had an additional point you wanted to discuss. Oh, good, sure. Did you already discuss? Or? Um, yes, I wanted to mention that you, you wrote on the orange uh, sticky notes, predefined table of metrics. It's important to note that users can also create custom metrics. It doesn't have to be our out of the box uh, metrics because we're connected to Prometheus. You can configure whatever you want. So we may not know the metric that they want to, to roll back from. So yeah, just, uh, would you say in that case, it makes kind of the case for this, like um, like have a predefined table of metrics. I understand that pre predefined can kind of like be biased towards existing ones, but in the creation of a custom metric, would it then be re registered? to this kind of table where you immediately have access to it and say like, hey, I create this new metric. Hey, it's accessible within this table. I can set it to auto or manual rollback. I don't know. <laughs> um, the way that I'm envisioning it is that if you configure these alerts on the alert side, in the monitor side, then it can propagate probably to some kind of setting I'm not sure technically how to do that, but it was probably possible. I mean, the users are, are defining it somewhere, so maybe that can just go pre-populated into settings. Um, another idea that we threw around was um, to, to set the metrics through a YAML file, but another idea could just be write an ugly query in the setting itself, similar to the one that you wrote in the alerts. Mm -hmm. 
So let's, let's quickly, as a last one here, look at this one. Um, add manual auto switch button in the settings. Can you explain a little bit why it should be in the settings versus somewhere else? Uh, thanks back to uh, you know the question that I raised like a couple of minutes ago. I don't know if it should be in the settings or in a CI configuration. Uh, bit of overlap here, uh, you know, regarding what we are trying to achieve. So it doesn't have to be in the settings. It's just that this exercise made me think of uh, a um, <clears throat> a previous functionality, and I remember putting a uh, a switch in the settings, and I think that was the right thing to do. So it could be the right thing to do here as well, but maybe the right thing. Is is also to uh, have it all CI configure, you know, how to have it in the CI configuration. So I don't know. There is a maybe here. I should have uh, added maybe before add manual auto switch button settings. Actually, I did. We'll as you can see. Um, so sorry. I actually wrote the same exact sticky note as you can see in pink on the right hand side. Um, yes. Yes. So. I agree with Etienne, it doesn't have to be a setting, but it needs to be super clear to the user what they're expecting. Do I want my pipeline to automatically roll back, yes or no? And do I want to give an option to specific users whether they can manually you know, click the button? Um, so I don't know, it could be a toggle in the environment page as well, which says manual automatic, you know, you choose one. Um, but it definitely needs to be defined for a project for environment. And I don't know if there's a better place than, than the setting. But it's definitely something that the user has to explicitly say what they want. Did you say per project environment? Yeah. I may want automatic rollback for my staging environment, but a manual one for my protected production environment. Ah, I, I was slightly confused. I was thinking project environment variables is like, what, <laughs> where, where's yeah, variables I coming from? It was for a project for a moment. Also, people have different projects with different, you know, granularity, and they may not care about some areas in their, in their code, which may be a separate project. And then the main business, the core business, they want, you know, rollbacks on. But some, you know, experiment, they don't really care, right? Would you expect it, like, would you expect a scenario where um, a environment will roll back automatically based on a certain threshold? But then there's another, and like another threshold where you would want to switch back rollback, like all within the same environment. Yes. So I'll give you an example that's a little bit weird, but uh, that's what I have in my mind right now because it's late. <laughs> uh, so um, Spinnaker has two thresholds, for example. Let's say we're talking about CPU usage. And I want to automatically roll back in case my CPU usage is over 90%. That I know 100%. But in case it's 80%, I just want to know about it. I don't want to roll back. I want to know about it. Maybe I'll decide manually to roll back, but I don't want the machine to do that automatically. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah some, some thresholds are, are more of like a for your information. Some needs an action upon it be it automatic or manual. And also, if, you, if we want to make it the simplest, even though I think it would be a crime to do that, but um, think about critical alarms I want to roll back, major alarms I want to know about, maybe I want to roll back. But that's like too much of a generalization. It really <laughs> depends on the specific threshold. All right. Um, thanks so much. I think we're gonna we're gonna leave it at that for now. Here, um, I think we we got to some extent. We explored one of the kind of themes that came out of at least three of the four people here. And you know, there's this was like one of the first takes we 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 got at this. Um, I, I want to thank all of you. I think this was amazing as well. Here, triggering this is a separate separate discussion to be had. 
uh, of ideas that combine both uh, chases as well as orits, um, as well as reporting. And I had like a, you know, one that fell outside the, bu the bucket. Might be, uh, you know, worth to explore, but might not be. I, I would, as like from all of these themes, I would have chosen this the last one. Um, so there's certainly discussions to be held here. Uh, I want to how. This uh, worthwhile to have a second one. Right, we discussion here on how. Um, regardless, I think it was a successful experiment. So thank you um, all for joining, and I hope I got through <laughs> because my internet is unstable for some reason. Thank you, Dimitri. I think this is thank really cool. Thank you. All right. Thank Cheers you. and uh, see you around. I'll post a recording later. Bye-bye.